Audition has three stereo imagery effects. Two of them were included in the CS6 version of Audition, and a third one, the Stereo Expander, was added to the Creative Cloud update to Audition. I cover the Stereo Expander in a separate lesson. I'm going to cover the other two in this lesson. One is a practical and fun to use effect. The other, I think, is an effect in search of a purpose, and I'm going to recommend you take a pass on it. If you want to follow along, go get these two files over here. A440 organ chords out of phase inside the working files demo files subfolder. And then go back over here to the music subfolder, just couldn't be that way subfolder, and get this guy here. It just couldn't be that way edited wave. Let's take a look at the fun effect first. Go to effects, stereo imagery, and go to center channel extractor. Now this effect does what it says it does. It tries to remove the center channel, but there really isn't a center channel. There's a left and a right channel. But if you combine the two, whatever is kind of panned toward the center or dead center then is going to sound like it's in a third channel called the center channel. And you can extract that, meaning you can remove the center channel, which typically removes the vocalist, because usually the vocalist is always panned to the center. There are also some instrumentalists there too. Lots of other instrumentals are panned to the center as well, so you might be removing them too, so you won't get the full width of all the instruments, but you will remove the center, which allows you then to create something like karaoke. If you want to be able to sing along with it, this gets rid of a lot of the vocalist. Switching that around, you can retain the vocalist, but drop a lot of the stuff on the left and the right side. So you have the vocalist plus whatever instruments were panned to the center, you retain those. Or you can change the frequency range such that whatever's in the center, you can change the frequency to emphasize that, which is usually the bass, because the bass is almost always pan center. So you reduce the frequency range down to something low, and you're just the bass. So we'll try all three approaches here just to give you a feel for how this works. There are quite a few possibilities here in terms of the properties. If you go to the discrimination side, you'll see there's several things here that I would suggest you just check out here inside the help file by clicking on this button over here. But I'm going to focus on just sort of the basic stuff here just to give you a sense for how this works. Let me get this thing set up. I want to extract the center. I'm going to have the frequency range set for the female voice, which is a very wide, wide frequency range. If you look down here, it goes from 140 to 20,000. So that's basically the full human hearing range except for the low bass. Right now it's set up so that the center channel level is set to 0 dB, more or less. We'll put it right down there in the middle, pretty much towards 0. And then the side channel is also at 0 right now. What I'm going to do is I start playing this. I'm going to start pulling down the side channels, and then you can sort of hear how they go away and that the center channel stays emphasized. Let me slide this guy over a little bit. And then we'll get rolling here, and I'm going to pull this guy down so you can see how that works. But you wanted me to stay, but it just couldn't be. You can see how the instruments kind of around her began to go away, but you still hear the guitarist in the middle and some other things because they were panned to the center. But that's kind of the way the process works. Let's just hear the bass on that side. I'll switch over to the bass frequency. Bass frequency you can see is way low, 20 hertz to 120. It's set at 70 hertz, if you look here in the slider, with a 100 hertz width. And if I were to put this on custom, I could create that by just, you know, building it using the custom version. But we'll take the bass preset here. Now you'll hear how just the bass sound shows through there. So if you're a bass player and you really want to hear just the bass, that's a great way to hear just the bass. Let me switch over to the female voice again. And now we're going to do the reverse. I'm going to put these guys back up again so they're more or less lined up. And as we play this, I'm going to pull the vocalist out so it becomes a karaoke kind of a thing. So here we go. Let's try that. I think you get a sense of how that works. You lose some instrumentalists because they're panned to the center, but you did lose the vocalist, and so you could use this for kind of an easy, quick way to make karaoke. So that is the center channel extractor. Let me close that down. Now let's go get the other one. That's effects, stereo imagery, graphic phase shifter. This is an effect, I think, in search of a purpose. If you're looking at it, you're going to go, what am I supposed to do? If you look at some of the presets, you're going to go, what do they mean? I don't get it. Well, this is an effect that's kind of built for guys who are really audio engineer types, not folks who really just want to edit music or create some nice sounding audio. These are guys who know sort of what's going on under the hood 
and that really is not the goal of this course. And also, you need to be able to know what's wrong with your audio to then be able to apply this graph to make it sound better. And there really is nothing inside Audition that will tell you what's really wrong with it so you can use this guy effectively. I do want to show you one thing, though, to give you a sense of an approach that Adobe is doing to try to begin to build some diagnostic tools that can help you. But this is just sort of a first step. Let me show you something called the phase meter. I'll go over here to the window, and there's the phase meter. And it's just this little itty bitty guy down here, but I'm going to make it bigger by bringing it over to this panel. What the phase meter shows is things that are out of phase, sort of. This term phase is kind of a misused term in the audio world, and I'm guilty of misusing it. Phase means when one channel is not really lined up in time with the other channel. And that happens lots of times when microphones are not placed properly. And so I've talked about that before with the effect over here called the automatic phase correction effect. So if you have mics that are a little bit out of line, or if you have tape heads that are a little bit out of line, then one of the channels will be slightly off in time with the other one. And that's called a phase shift. But some people also refer to phase shifts when the one channel is inverted. And that really is a polarity shift. In this file, I inverted this channel. There, this was a mono file that I made stereo, but I inverted this channel. And then I put it out of phase slightly. And wanting to see what happens with the phase meter. I'll just show you what happens with the phase meter. A clip that works well, like this one, the phase meter will read over here to the right. So it's almost perfectly in phase. In this case, the phase is really measuring. It's not whether things are out of time or whether they're inverted or have bad polarity. It's measuring correlation. It's how well do each of these channels correlate. So it looks at both phase and whether they're inverted. And so that one showed that, you know, it's more or less perfect. I mean, you're going to have some things bumping up against each other because there's so many instruments playing there at once. So there will be a little bit of issue, but otherwise it's darn near perfect. This one, though, will show you that it's over here toward the red. That's because it's a little bit out of phase and it's also out of polarity. What does this tell you? Does it tell you to use the graphic phase shifter? If I get the graphic phase shifter open up again. Does it tell you what to do with this thing? Not really. It just gives you a sense that something is wrong. And so, yes, we know something is not right with this clip here, but this guy really won't help us make those repairs. We need to have something else that shows us exactly what to do to make repairs. So this is a thing that you know an audio engineer might enjoy working with. It's really an effect that needs more features in it before it can become really useful. I do want to show you, though, just briefly what an out-of-phase clip looks like. So I'm going to zoom in on this thing a little bit and get in really close on it so you can see something here. I want you to look at how these files are arranged. See the peak right there? That's the peak right there. It's just a little bit out of alignment, and it's also flipped. So not only down here is this polarity reversed, this peak down here should be going up instead of going down. You can also see that it's off by a few samples. This is the phase shift when it's off by a few samples. And when it's flipped over like this, that's a polarity issue. So phase shift and polarity, and it shows up here as a correlation issue in the phase meter. But it's really hard to take this and turn that into something you can use with the graphic phase shifter to make a repair. So unfortunately, that effect is not really ready for prime time. And I think in terms of the stereo imagery effects, just focus on the center channel extraction and have some fun with that one.